So welcome to another video from EDUB Services. This one's a little bit different to normal. We're taking this opportunity at the end of 2021 to have a bit of a look back over the last year uh, and look ahead to what's coming in 2022 as well. So I'm joined by the other full-time members of our team, uh, Joss and Deck. And so I thought we'd kick off by just saying, is there any particular part of 2021, any particular project, any particular vehicle that really stood out for you, something that you really uh, Joy as a particular memory. Josh, what do you reckon? Do you have any thoughts? Uh, for me, the BMW 700 was an absolute blast to work on. Uh, it was just, it was simple, it was very much, uh, we, we got it done once we actually started to get down to the ground of it. We got it done in a couple of months, maybe, not even that. Um, the, the one downside I will say to that is that I didn't quite fit. It was um, like a small car. It yeah. was a small car, but it was a beautiful car, which kind of makes up for it. Deck on the other hand did fit. <laughs> yeah, but I was going to say the exact same thing on the BMW. So <laughs> because you fit into it. Because I fit into no it. No other reason. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you did the video for it, is because yes, it yes. was just impractical for anybody else. To I should have the right next to it. It's great. <laughs> Look at the scale. My favourite thing about the BMW was those door handles. Kind of Tesla inspired door uh, Yeah, you think they're Tesla inspired. By so there were a lot of Tesla door <laughs> before Tesla ever existed. We worked out the BMW was the oldest car we ever worked on. Really? Uh, what was year older, was that? I can't remember. But it was older. <laughs> our previous oldest was uh, Ruby the camper, who was 71. Um, I think it's in the 60s. I can't remember off the top of my head uh, what it was. I'll look it up. Um, but it was, I'll put it on the screen now. Thanks, future me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so favorite project was BMW. Were you going to say the same thing? I was going to say the exact same thing, but I'll, uh, I'll say the Golf instead. Just because the Golf was actually really fun to work on for me, because I didn't have all the problems you two did. Being that I didn't start working here until <laughs> three months ago, and then for the last three months there's not been that many problems as you two did. But working on it for me, range testing it, it's been, it's been good. I've enjoyed it. Because I remember you're not familiar with electric cars at all. In terms of no, it was actually all completely new to me. It's actually been really fun to learn. Was there something where this was your first electric car that you've driven? Yeah, it was either this or the BMW. It was like the first yeah. automatic, never mind electric. Yes, <laughs> and I love that you could kind of take that for the rest of your life. What was the first electric car you ever drove? Well, it was a Tesla powered Golf Mark 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was brilliant. Um, so I found that really interesting as well, it's just not only walking through with you the process of how to do it and how to do the range testing, what we're looking out for, but just your experience of actually how does this drive, how is this fun compared to <laughs> what you're used to. Um, and you're a little bit into your cars as well, so how do you find the comparison of, of the Golf Mark II compared to what you're used to? Um, before driving them, I always thought stick shift was the best way, like it was just so much more fun to drive, but automatics is so much easier. Like. If I was going to get a new car and that from now, if I'd be an automatic, just, just because of how easy it is. So, next question is, is there anything that maybe stood out from the previous year that maybe wasn't, say, a highlight of anything that you seem to remember from the last year gone by? Um, I'm not going to say a negative, because they never happen. We never have any bad days. <laughs> no. Um, nothing ever goes wrong. Um, but is there anything else that stands out from a particular, maybe it's a problem that we had that we had to overcome or something on those lines? What do you think? Uh, well, I think Def will second this, but just in general, coolant systems. <laughs> just, always, always good for them. Just coolant systems as a whole. Filling them, emptying them, drinking them, <laughs> showering in them. De literally. <laughs> literally showering them. <laughs> Dex just put away his, his hoodie from, the, from last week that was completely drenched. Um, coolant systems are just a joy to work. There were times I'd come out of the office and you'd just be in a vest. Because all the previous there have been times been so this year rude. that I've just been topless. In the summer. <laughs> I've just been like, well, this top's ruined. Take it off. <laughs> that has been enjoyable for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> There's no footage of this. I'm afraid it wasn't. Maybe next year. Maybe next year we'll do it. The things we're looking forward like to. Like a cool, <laughs> a cool shower. Yeah. <laughs> Look out for the calendar. The calendar. <laughs> So calling systems are always fun. Always. Always fun. The amount of times if, if we have to change one little thing or remove one little battery or remove the drive unit for whatever reason, or the inverter, then we have to pull the entire cooling system apart, which means draining it. And generally, when I drain it, I need to be underneath it. <laughs> Not a good idea. 
But there's also, what's so important about obviously cooling systems is they are essential for the vehicle to run. They're essential to stop the vehicle braking, but they're completely different to an ice vehicle um, cooling system. And that's been really complicated for us, hasn't it? It's, to, it's no good just to say, let's take a cooling system and put it in this car. Yeah. We have to be really clever about, well, what does it actually need? What, yeah. are, the, what are the temperatures going on here and how delicate are they? Yeah. Um, and I found that to be really complicated to yeah. actually, because it's, especially when you're working with such limited specs, you can't just go, sure, let's throw in a huge radiator and a huge filler tank and a header tank and an expansion tank, it'd be fine, because yeah. there's no space. And it all needs to be chunky tube when really the battery modules in here want a 10 mil tube, which is tiny compared to what a normal combustion engine would have to put. Yeah, yeah. So that's always been quite challenging to add around. Deck, what about yourself? Um, from experience, probably like a 12 volt system, just high voltage stuff seems fairly straightforward. We're trying to trying to do a, volt, a 12 volt system, just so many cables, so many wires, it's just, especially when you get told to uh, figure them all out and rewire them and sort of all that, it's, it's great fun. Definitely when they're all the same colour as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, try, we always try and start a 12 volt system with multicolored looms. And then when we all go for the same in the end, they all end up being, we just got big looms of reds and blacks for positives and negatives. Well, what was yeah. super fun most recently was finding a negative that was red. Always read the pin out diagram. Yes, and, and check it, and then check it again. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we found as well as over the last many years is actually, for the most part, you'll have, because our vehicles are so over safe, they've got safety, they've got safety, they've got safety, so many protocols, and so often if something doesn't work, because it's a particular 12 volt system was just not connecting properly. So that's a bad crimp or a bad earth or a bad connection. And bad solder, yeah, I found that that's, that's always been. So we make a big deal of it now, don't we? We're like, it seems really over the top, we were like 12 volt systems. Yeah, yeah. Have to be 100%. Yeah. Um, that's before you even come across, you know, lights, radio, and all that sort of 12 volt stuff that is secondary to the confusions that we've had. I mean, you've dealt with a lot of that. Yeah, a lot of the uh, BMW and a lot of the girls. Yeah. 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 It's been fun. So final question for you guys is looking forward to 2022. Uh, you guys are aware of some of the stuff that's coming up. Some of them are secrets and some of them... <laughs> I have not signed an NDA. <laughs> I'll just bleep it out okay. uh, if you say the wrong thing. But some of them are, yeah, are really exciting that are coming up next year. So is there any particular projects that you're looking forward to coming in the new year? Dan? Yeah, I've got the, um, the Porsche actually. Yeah, it's going to be the first Porsche that I'm going to probably test drive. Oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've already discussed it. It sounds like you signed yourself up for that. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it, I, I like Porsches. It's, it's going to be interesting to turn it on fully electric. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Cool. And that's using the, the brand new kit from Zero EV. That's really impressive. Yeah, the plug and play. Yeah, yeah it's actually really fun because we use Zero EV stuff for, for a couple of years now. And um, to see it all in the same way that we would use it, it's the same components that we used to just being assembled by somebody else to kind of put them in together. So it kind of takes a lot of work off our shoulders to some standpoint. Hopefully, yeah, love, love, love. hopefully it should mean that we can do more of them so you can be able to get through more Porsche 911 and, and turn them out um, a bit quicker and please more customers is the, <laughs> is the end goal. Um, Josh, how are you? Uh, so next year I think I'm most looking forward to uh, potentially running down to the Nürburgring in Germany and uh, Hoping to break some records with a, tra uh, a T6 VW um, transporter, that'll be fun. It's going to be a challenge to get two dual motors running under a vehicle. You've done all the theory behind this, so I, I trust you. Yeah, it will work. It will work. I'm sure it will. Uh, but it's just kind of scary getting that much power going through any kind of vehicle. Yeah, I, I think I'm most looking forward to a couple more of these classic campers because the fitting in the next two campers we've got to do are both the biggest pack that we can fit inside these campers so 170 mile range rapid charging and that for me is it's kind of the end of the long journey for us since 2013 is, is getting to a point where we can actually put the best technology and the best packaging with the best components and the best stats into a classic camper van and make it good and do it well and don't compromise what can we do something that is the best of the best in those things? So I'm really excited to it'll be sometime around March time and have one of those finished. Um, and that's that's something that's pretty exciting for me because again that's one of those where we will just make more of them. It's going to be an off the shelf part. We'll have the, the parts all lined about so it's like what we've got behind us. 
I'm most impressed when it comes to these new kits for the campers. I'm most impressed that we don't take up any internal space whatsoever. Like all of it is in the engine bay or underneath. It's just, it's just incredible. Like uh, my motto for kit is he's like, where do we put all these batteries? Just rip out the back seats. Just get rid. Because we're working on golfs and things like this where there's no room, and we need to get 20 yard batteries in there, as well as the motor and all the other gubbins. Just rip out the back seats and be done with it. But with this, there's so much room we can just we can throw it all underneath, and it just it works a dream. Yeah, yeah, a lot of design, a lot of hours on the phone with Dan and the team. Yeah, um, yeah, that's something that I'm most looking forward to. I think coming next year and our new unit. So this will be the last time in this unit. It's technically not really our last day because we haven't got the new units yet. But starting next year, probably the next few years, you guys will see are going to be in our brand new. So that's fresh the thing. Freshly painted, because we have to do that as soon as we move in or yes. else. Um, so yeah, that's all for now. Uh, we hope that you guys all have a happy new year as well, and we look forward to checking back in with you with any future projects that we're working on with EW Services in 2022. And all that remains for this video is to give you a very slow motion wave goodbye. Ha ha ha!